Desiree Sunford is found partially naked and brutally murdered. My doorbell rang and I opened the door to two Grant County Sheriff deputies and they informed me that my daughter's body had been found. She had been shot to death, murdered in her home. It appears the 30-year-old art teacher tried to crawl away, but couldn't escape a fatal 9mm bullet to her head. Did Desiree have any enemies that you knew of? No. No, not at all. She was a friend to everyone, so it boggled my mind to, to think of that, you know, who could have possibly had that much aggression against her to kill her. Initially, Desiree's husband, Scott Sunford, tells investigators he suspects a burglar who had hit their house just a week before had returned. And this time he takes Desiree's life when she caught him in the act. Did you buy that story or theory? Not really. Neither did the Yakima County Sheriff's Office, so detectives haul Scott in for questioning. But while Scott waits in the interrogation room, deputies notice something odd. Don't think about your wife. Don't think about her. Instead of mourning Desiree's horrific death, Scott appears to be psyching himself up for the questions to come. Was he torn up at all, emotional, that his wife was just found shot to death? It doesn't seem like his emotions were on par with um, the situation. Investigators begin with the burning question on everyone's mind. It sounds like by the time you actually made it to the house, you were pretty frantic. Like, you felt like something had gone wrong. My stomach was churning. I was shaking. I, I had convinced myself by that point something had to be wrong. So why not go in the house and check things out and make sure she's okay? Because I was afraid. Afraid? The tough, pistol-packing military guy? Scared? You're shaking your head. That's, that's exactly what anyone and everyone that hears that part of the story is totally dumbfounded. It's just not normal husbandly behavior. Yeah. Even if you're afraid that the bad guy is still in there, this is your wife. Yeah. You're going to leave her in there to fend for herself with the bad guy? Desiree's mother, Connie Cast, and Yakima detectives begin to wonder if Scott didn't enter the house because he already knew what he was going to find. Well, it's not that I was afraid of anybody being in there. You just don't want to see what may have happened to her. Yeah. Does he go to the top of the list as a potential suspect? He does. He was considered uh, a suspect in this case. But Scott maintains he's completely innocent. He even offers up an ironclad alibi. He was an hour outside of Yakima for a family funeral. Then you stayed at your dad's in Kennewick? Uh, no, I actually stayed with a friend. A female friend. Was it uh, just a platonic friendship? Or were you, did you have well, a sexual relationship? No, and honestly, we didn't even do anything. I was out on the couch. Here's where Scott's alibi gets complicated. The woman in the blonde wig is Scott's alibi, and they've got a secret. He came in and spent the night at my place. Scott says he slept on the couch, is that true? No, no it's not. If he was in my house, he was in my bed. She's sitting down with Crime Watch Daily for her first interview ever. You wanted to conceal your identity and not use your name, and we're not using your name. We're respecting your wishes, we help disguise and alter your identity. Right. She says she's finally ready to come clean about what happened in the days and months leading up to Desiree's horrific murder. When you met Scott, did you know he was married to Desiree? Um, I knew that he was married, but I had been told that he was separated. At what point did you and Scott start to get intimate? Uh, actually, it was the day that I found out that he was still actively married. And you're what, the mistress? I didn't see myself being a mistress long term. I also wasn't entirely sure that I wanted to date him, but sex was cool. So I, I went with that. The mistress tells me shortly after the affair started, Scott concocted an elaborate plan to introduce her to Desiree, telling his wife she was dating his buddy. 
Why did you and Scott want to arrange this meeting? We didn't want her to be suspicious. Did you guys hit it off? Oh, yeah. Yeah, from the very beginning, actually, we, uh, we became very, very close. I helped her plan Scott's 30th birthday the following month. While you're still sleeping with Scott? Yes. And does she have any idea? Not at the time, no. The mistress says she and Desiree got a little too close for comfort. I was living with them part time. We all slept in the same bed. How big is this bed? It's a California king. You know, we all we all shared the same bed. And at the time, it was Desi in the middle. And eventually, it moved to Scott being in the middle. Is it possible Scott wanted to kick Desiree out of the bed for good? And the mistress was motive for murder. Scott's wife is dead. Sure. Scott's, mm -hmm. Scott's not with her when she's gunned down, but you find out now that he, he has an affair. Uh -huh. So if you're looking at motivation. Sure, yeah, there's, there's red flags that pop up. But when the detective drills Scott about the affair, he tells him he's got it all wrong. You know, I shouldn't go there because it's kind of rude, but, uh, well, Des didn't want me to say anything to anybody, but at one point, her and had a, a little thing going for a while there. So it was, so, it was Desiree and <laughs> you had the sexual relationship? Yeah, sometimes, we all did. Sometimes you're too. Honestly, we all did. You're sleeping with Desiree's husband, unbeknownst to her at the time. Yes. But then you start sleeping with Desiree. And at that point it was, well, let's just do it all together. It, uh, it evolved into a polyamorous relationship. So to be clear, all of you are having a consensual open relationship. Yes. All of you are having sex with each other. Yes. And how long did this threesome last? Up until right before she was murdered, actually. The mistress tells me she and Scott never wanted to get rid of Desiree. They both loved her. But after the murder, you're still seeing Scott. Yeah, yeah. And what's going through your mind? I was under the thinking of Scott and his mistress had something to do with it. Quite the coincidence. Yeah. Perfect alibi. They were together. So he he said she didn't do it because she was with me. She said he didn't do it because he was with me. The mistress is now making the claim that her, Scott, and Desiree, your daughter, were in a polyamorous relationship. I can safely say that my daughter would never have participated in such an act. No threesomes going on. Absolutely not. Detectives also find the alibi shaky, but there's no proof Scott or his mistress had anything to do with Desiree's murder. In fact, investigators actually discover mystery DNA in a bloody shoe print at the crime scene that doesn't belong to either one of them. It's one of those cases where you just start scratching your head trying to figure out what is, what is going on here. And after months of hitting dead ends, the case goes cold. There wasn't anybody else to look at. Then, a year and a half after Desiree Sunford was gunned down inside her home, a tip is called in to Crime Stoppers saying they know who murdered the young teacher. Who was this tipster? The tipster in the situation was uh, was the mistress. Was uh, Scott's, Scott's mistress? mistress? Yes, Scott's mistress. Up next. Does the mistress hold all the answers? I was terrified that he was on to me. Or is the woman in this blonde wig really the devil in disguise? This is you writing to her. If you ever die and he needs a wife, I'm half convinced that would be me. Let me ask the question another way. If you weren't sleeping with Desiree's husband, would she still be alive today? You're having sex with Desiree. I'm having sex with Desiree's Scott. having sex with her husband. Mm -hmm. You're having sex with Scott. Yeah. Everyone's on the same page. Exactly. 